Hello and welcome back to North Forts. Today we are looking at something big yellow and black. We have got a New Holland TH 7.42 Elite. So, uh, it's a little bit windy so apologies if that comes up in the audio. Um, we've got ourselves a New Holland telehandler on demo following on from the Merlot we had the other week and uh, I quite like it, it's a handsome looking machine. It's uh, a bigger machine than the Merlot, so it's an unfair comparison yet again, but um, it's very capable. It's a, uh, well, the salesman Richard, he said to me it's effectively a T6. So it's a T6 engine, it's T6 uh, gearbox, power shift bits and pieces, and uh, I think parts of the axle are also T6. So it's 146 horsepower through the same four cylinder engine. And uh, yeah, it's got some good grunt to it. I'll give it that. Been uh, muck spreading, as you can see. Mark is over there with the muck spreader and he's making his way quite nicely through the heap. But um, having a nice big telehandler means that we can fill up that muck spreader with just five buckets of this big boy. So that's very nice. So, New Holland don't do their own headstock. This is a Manitou because Ernesto's used to be Manitou dealers. So most of their customers are used to Manitou headstock. So that's why that Manitou headstock is there. But I believe from factory you can pick whatever you like but they tend to be the JCB ones, just because JCB has quite a good dominance on the market. So it's a seven meter boom, capable of lifting, there's a seven meters, capable of lifting 4.2 tons. Beastie. Compared to our little JCB, uh, this is nearly double the capacity. So quite the step up. Come around the back here, we have the pickup hitch, which is capable of going into the floor. So when your trailer sinks, you can pick it up again, which is good thinking, very English attitude about it. We've dropped it in the floor, we better send the pickup hitch. Got a nice big ran stop here for safety. Um, on these 500 tires as well, I was told that these have to have an extra stop on the articulation on the axle, so that's quite interesting. But if you have the slightly smaller tyres, you don't need that. So if you want a bit more, a little less ground clearance and a bit more articulation, that's the option you need. I'll be honest, I really like the light packages. It's the same uh, LED work lights that you have on all of the New Holland products now. The mirrors, gooey, uh, nice and big. And uh, I thought there was too many of them, but actually, if you look up there, that's your mirror for when you're reversing and you're looking out the back of the cab, you can actually see the front. And I'll tell you what, that might be one of the best things on the machine. I really like that as an idea. As you're reversing, you can see your front. Simple but effective. And the same with this one at the back, at the front here as well. That's meant to be your boom mirrors, is what Richard called them. So, come around the front, new Holland badge, and we've got uh, the towing point. There's not a whole lot else you can really say you can see. Nice big bucket for grain shoveling. It's uh, doing a good job with the bulb waste. A little bit of peat from the daffodils. The front mud guards are steering with the wheels. The rear ones do not. This makes a lot of sense. But this is um, probably the one thing from being an engineer point of view. I think this is a good idea. The pins have a bit of float on this. So this is the retrain restraining bolt. But if you actually look at the bottom here, it's actually got room to float. So as the as long as you keep it greased, that pin will just move that little bit on the on the retaining bolt as you're using it and as you're greasing it. So that way, if you ever have to remove your pins, 
it's uh, very well greased and it won't rust, which they do all over the headstock as well. And uh, I think that's a marvellous idea. Let's get out of the wind. Right, before we get it out of the wind, that is a big door and I like it. The door is massive, it's, well that's probably a foot, that's nearly a three foot door, I would say. Absolutely massive, which makes this entrance and a lovely wide step. I reckon that's the same steps they use on the combines, you know. <laughs> that might be the same step they use on the combines. Nice big entranceway into the cab. Then we'll shut the door. Lovely. Right then, so now we've got a very nice simple layout. And the first thing I want to point out is probably uh, another one of my favourite things about this. Armrest attached to the seat. So as I'm jumping, the joystick stays with me. I like that. That's a comfort thing. Very nice. Um, look around the back here. You've not got a lot of um, storage space. That is literally the back of the cab there. But it's soundproof. You've got a little tray. I don't know what you're going to put in there. Probably some Freddo frogs or something. Uh, cup holder. Got to have a cup holder. And then you come over to your steering wheel and your instrument panel. Right then, controls. Very simple, traditional joystick. We got up, and we go up, down, and we go down. Tilt left and right, as you'd expect. And then we move on to uh, boom out as usual, auxiliary as usual. So that's all the same. Then we've got five buttons which are to do with the transmission. So we've got forward and reverse, and they are different divoted buttons, so you can feel the difference. Then we have manual up, down, and neutral. So I've been driving this mainly in manual mode, so I have been using these quite a lot. Number one gear, or first gear rather, has got quite a good bit of torque but I do feel like as soon as that's getting into any hard ground it doesn't feel like the drivetrain's turning all at once it's losing all of the power straight into one wheel so I don't feel the benefit of the four-wheel drive is is probably my first reaction now that I'm in a field with this machine um, had a similar thought when I was in the wood chip store as soon as I was getting some as soon as I was asking for the load it started to lose it through the drive chain so it's just a little bit lackluster in that department for a good push but perhaps I'm set up wrong if you come down here we've got the home and the enter button which is the same on say the T7s and such on your dashboard if I hold this button down, we have the setup menu. I can then go into the transmission menu and I can change the different aggressive modes. So we'll set it to one. I've had it in three because that was best for the wood chip. And I'll just try the next few loads in one just to see if that's any better for uh, the muck heap. Well, not the muck heap, the bulbs. But um, the rest of the dashboard I quite like, you know, having this um, set up so you can go through, you can change the tyre sizes, test mode, no idea what that is, I'm going to leave that alone. Servicing, uh, your DPF clean, uh, I assume that is, yes, you can turn your reverser off. Very nice feature if you're working near houses early in the mornings, you can turn that off just to be kind to your neighbours. Change between your miles per hour hours, uh, no, clock that'd be, which is currently wrong. Uh, warning codes and back to your transmission and to get out you just press home. So that's nice, I quite like that as a dashboard, having all those different customizer options. Then got battery isolator, that is the lock for your pins in the bucket, so once you've used this to fire your pins across, you can flick this, and now this does nothing. So, that's nice. Um, then we come to highway mode. And I really like this, you flick that on, 
says on the dashboard, we're now in highway mode, and it'll ask you to go to two wheel steer. Two wheel steer is then, you pull this little flat back, flick it there, and you go all the way one way until it's hard, all the way the other until it's hard, and just like that, the axle, the rear axle, is locked. Like they all should be, all telehandlers should automatically centre the rear axle. There's no if buts about it. But um, then you can put this little cover on so you can't knock that while you're driving and that'll stay in two wheel stiff. Very nice, similar to the original like JCB style, but my one criticism of that is they put this the other way up, whereas the JCBs were always that at the top. So this feels like, you know, that would flap about a little. I mean, it's on locking nuts, which are fairly nice and tight, but I feel like you do that enough times, that'll start to slacken off, and that'll hang there, like, flapping about. Not, not sure that's the best that could have been gone with there, but I do like the highway mode as a button, because it's a good idea, I like it. We then come to um, all your different automatic modes. Currently we are in manual, you flick that it goes to F and that is the full automatic range from second gear all the way up to sixth which is what you're going to use for your sort of highway use and all that sort of jazz. Um, we then have S, I can't remember what S stands for but that is um, sort of more you're pushing up gears or you're loading gears so that's two to four um, so it's not your highway gears it's just sort of more your, your high speed for the yard but not high speed anywhere else so we'll flick that back to manual because first gear is actually quite useful on this it's where the gear system does work quite well uh, on telehandlers because you can just apply power but like I said I do feel like the four-wheel drive is a little bit lacklustre it just needs a little bit more somewhere or I don't know like a, a slip diff or something like that it just needs a little bit extra then come over to this switch here which I quite like you flick that that's now on and now my brake works as a clutch so when I'm on that driver's disengaged which is good quite like that then we've got on the bottom row so those are all your sort of different operational features and then we've got all the lights at the bottom. And the window wiper at the top. So very nice. And the easy setup. Then got the aircon here, and I will I will say, the aircon on this is actually very cold. It's quite a warm day today. I think it's about 14 degrees, so not crazy, but that's making this very comfortable very very comfortable so you can go full blitz like that and you leave it at one of course you can turn off the aircon like that very nice um, it's also worth pointing out the steering column is exactly as you'd find it on the tractors you know that's all familiar that's familiar that's your park brake there is no manual park And like I said, you've got your forward reverse here as well. That's quite good. You then have your um, boom float, or boom suspension here. So to flick that on, you have to have the boom all the way down and crowded back. Flick the switch and then lift the boom slightly and it comes on. Quite simple. Then got um, change of function for the auxiliary switches here which I think that one does the front, that one does the rear, I think, I can't remember. Something like that, anyway. We then have the reverser fan, which you can leave on permanently. That will uh, launch the reversing fan every six minutes, apparently. I think that's a lovely feature. So that is my brief look round the new Holland Telehandler. My overall thoughts on the machine is... It's a very average machine, and I wish that I could complement it more, because I actually can't say it's a bad machine. 
it did everything that we wanted to in the couple of days that we had it. Handled itself well, you know, it was a very good weight capacity on that machine, you know, we never really had such a big machine on the yard. But it's mainly held back by its transmission. I'll be honest, after a couple of days of use, the transmission is a real killer on um, on the desire of this machine. It's rather basic power shift, and there's no getting away from that. It is you in manual mode. We'll say if I go from second to third, um, you feel the gear changes. You know, road mode is better in the auto. But realistically, the only time you're going to be using auto is for road use. Because the only way we could get true like, power through the wheels to the floor was by having it in first gear all the time. Now, first gear, completely serviceable gear. You can get all your jobs done in that. But that is the only way that you can get power down to the floor. You try and push up wood chip. And wood chip is incredibly light compared to, you know, what a lot of people do with pushing up grain. You know, wood chip's incredibly light. And in second, as soon as you get a bucket full and push, there's no go. So, I'm really sorry, New Holland. I've really got to criticise you for, for the gearbox. If this was more in line with like a hydrostatic, you know, something a lot smoother, less noticeable on the gear changes, you'd probably get away with its sort of lacklustre in power. But it's because it's it's so obviously down on the power and then clunky in the gear changes, it's just so obvious that the gearbox isn't ready yet. I'd love to uh, see this machine in a couple of years' time because I think it's... It's got everything right apart from the gearbox, and the gearbox is just where so many points are taken away from it. You know, I thought the cab trim and comfort was really good. It's where New Holland has to be, you know, to keep in line with the rest of its tractors uh, and combines. You know, seats were comfortable, the armrest, brilliant. Liked the armrest being attached to the joystick. Thought that was brilliant. Layout as well in the cab. Very user friendly. If this was the telehandler that you were going to learn on, you know, first ever pass your ticket, brilliant. You know, every button is so obvious what it does. You know, really good cab. Like the cab. But I just can't say that this machine is going to be right for everyone. I think if you are very much a New Holland lover, you've got New Holland Fleet. You know, by all means, give this telehandler a go. It may fit in with your style of work. But for myself and our farm, I definitely felt like it was just missing a few tricks, we'll say. And I couldn't really say what it is it's missing, apart from power, to say that this, this wouldn't be a multi-tool. Because at the minute, it just feels very much like a very basic loader. But... Apart from that, I would say if you're if you're a New Holland bod, definitely give it a go. If you don't run New Holland tractors, I don't think the attraction's going to be there for you. But um, overall, it's a painfully average machine. New Holland. I look forward to seeing this in a few years' time when it's had a little bit more development. But I like the machine. I think it's very handsome. It's got a very good styling to it. The grey and the yellow. You know, very in keeping with the combines thought the styling worked well. So, there you have it. There is the new Holland Telehandler. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, we make sort of reviews like this every now and again, but mainly we're flower farming and a bit of barley. So, if you like that sort of content, make sure you give us a like and a subscribe. And uh, if you have an opposing comment um, about the Telehandler, you know, let me know in the comments, was I using the machine wrong, you know, is there a, a another way that I can use this gearbox, because that's the biggest niggle with me on this machine, you know, I, I really would like to hear from you guys if you've driven this machine, or if you use this machine daily, you know, because I, I really do like the New Hollands, I, I, I want people to know that, you know, New Hollands do have good tractors, I just don't think they have a good telehandler yet, so, we'll come back in a few years time I think, 
But until then, thanks for watching. And again, like and subscribe, and we shall see you in the next video. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.